March, April eclipse season. What is this all about? All right, first it's about relationships, intensely about relationships. This first eclipse in March, what relationships are ready to end or what aspects of relationships are ready to die. This first full moon is culmination, is ending, is the peak of something, it's done, it's over, it's a death, possibly for a rebirth. So relationships are super highlighted. Any kind of partnerships, long-term contracts um, are very, very highlighted um, because of the Libra aspect of this eclipse season. The other aspect that's really highlighted is the self aspect. Where are we not being true to ourselves? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what ties are we going to have to cut so that we can be more true to ourselves? Eclipses are very soulful. It's about your soul purpose. It's about your higher callings. It's about kind of like your mission on this earth at this time in this life. Um, and so you wanna think, what is my highest expression of self? Um, eclipses are very soulful. They take into account very strongly our destiny points, north node, south node. So your true north, truest true north. Where is it that your soul wants to go? Not where do your ancestral patternings want to take you? or where does your wounding want to take you? It is where does your highest self want to take you? Eclipses give us this moment in time, this window, this portal where the soul gets louder. The soul gifts, the soul callings, the soul aspects get much, much louder than the little self, the egoical self, the mundane daily self, the, it's like eclipses give us this moment in time where it takes the blinders off, right? It takes the blinders off where we maybe could have been eking our way through life a little bit or eking our way through a relationship or eking our way through our job, right? Just like it's good enough. Eclipses take the blinders off and go, it's really not good enough. <laughs> it's really not lighting you up. It's really not fulfilling. It's really not purposeful for you. That's my little dog bouncing around in the background. Um, weirdly, he's apparently hanging out with me during this particular eclipse video. Okay, that was our quick little intro um, to just give you a feel of what this conversation is gonna be about. So I create these conversations. I really started doing it as a way for like my team to feel into what's going on in the world. How can we organize our lives? How can we organize our business around the energies at play? How can we get into alignment with them versus um, being like going against the grain or trying to swim up river or trying to walk into the wind? It's like, all right, let's put the wind in our sails and help this propel us forward. For me, this whole conversation is about your evolution. Evolution meaning your greatest fucking expression of self, right? Your soul's expression of self, that creating a life for yourself that is so true and it is so fulfilling and it makes you feel so fucking alive, right? It is just like, like becoming the thing and creating the life that helps you become the person that is like, this is what I came here to do. That's my whole aim here. That's Rewilding's whole aim. That's everything that we do here. Um, Tucker apparently agrees with that if you hear him whining in the background. Uh, hopefully he uh, takes a nap in a moment and I'm sorry that we're having these distractions. Let me share with you a little bit of the heiress energy that's happening with this clip season. So it's reminding me of the dog. So whenever I do these conversations, it's like an embodiment of eclipse season. Um, and I'm gonna talk about what that means a little bit, but uh, it's like all of the archetypal energies, I've been sitting with this for days, um, and it's like the archetypal energies, they all start to dance in me. They start to come alive in me, like the alignments and the placements and like, which are the loud aspects of self. Archetypal energies are just aspects of self. One of them, the one that I was just about to talk about with the dog disruption, right? The dog um, distraction is Eris. Eris is a very, very loud player in this eclipse season, both the March eclipse and the April eclipse. 
Eris. Feel into this for yourself. Eris is goddess of chaos and discord. Goddess of chaos and discord. So it's a feminine archetypal energy, but she's a warrior. She's a warrior. She's a dark goddess. Dark goddess meaning she likes to point at the hidden. She likes to point at the things that we don't want to see. And she's a truth warrior. So she likes to point at the things that we don't want to see in the name of truth, like deep truth. So she doesn't care about the disruption she causes to get you to truth. She doesn't care about the chaos that she causes. She doesn't care about the fucking war she causes. She was part of the Trojan War, right? So this is an archetypal energy that was part of the Trojan War. So creating these chaos, these, you know, like mini battles, these just let me cause massive disruption so that you get to a deeper truth, so that you can see a deeper truth. So if I can create chaos and I can, you know, like, like a big storm comes in and you get to see what's really valuable for yourself. You get to see what's really meaningful. That's Eris. You get to see yourself from a lens of like, wow, like I think about my sister, um, she lives in Chicago and they had this like massive tornadoes came through, right? Or a tornado, I'm not sure if it was multiple tornadoes or a tornado, but massive tornado come through. Right? And it's like this massive disruption and chaos happens. But as you're huddled in the basement with your family, afraid that your house is gonna be ripped down, shit gets real. That's this eclipse season. And it's not just because of Eris. Eris is just amplifying eclipse season. Eclipse season is that energy. Like shit gets real. It wants to strip away, you know, all the layers and all the daily grind stuff so that we can go, this is what's really meaningful. So that we're in the basement of our house, huddled with our family, right? And you go, I don't care if the house gets destroyed. My family is what's important to me. This is my priority in life, right? Like, I don't care if I don't go back to my job. I, that's actually just like some nine to five thing. I, that has zero meaning for me. And that's eclipse season. So if we can, give ourselves the space, um, the practices, the groups, the inputs, right? What are we taking into our consciousness? What are the environments we're spending our time in? I know for me, like being out in nature is so valuable, especially when stuff gets chaotic, especially when eclipses are throwing lightning bolts, <laughs> right? Of soul alignment at us. It's kind of what it's like. It's like, lightning bolts of soul alignment and it's it's like all of the all of the celestial bodies they just start dancing in a way and it's like this divine orchestration of of being able to like move us and maneuver us and throw lightning bolts at us and you know like fire bombs to the face to get us in deeper alignment with what is really meaningful for us. So just feel into that. That's what, that's what eclipses are about. It's what is really meaningful for you, like deeply meaningful, like drops you to your knees meaningful. That's this eclipse season. That's all eclipse seasons. And I'll talk a little bit more about what makes this eclipse, what's unique about this eclipse season and how we can work with it. Um, and so that's part of our conversation that we'll go into. I'll keep going into um, more of the archetypal energies at play. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm giggling because the archetypal energies at play are just, uh, it's so, it's, there's dark goddesses involved. Um, we've got Kali, we've got Persephone, we've got Lilith involved. What does dark goddesses mean? That means, um, let me feel, I wanna give you some specific words around this eclipse energy. So if eclipse energy is always pushing us toward what is meaningful, what lights us up in life, what is really true, and also it pushes us towards what are your unique gifts to give the world? What are your unique gifts to give the world? What are your unique expressions of self? You know, what is, and especially because it's in Aries, it's a North Node in Aries, it's your uniqueness, it's you, it's self. Now he's pushing the camera, right? I, got, I seriously got like Aries running around the goddamn room, just causing mad chaos in here. Um, yeah, this is what you get for getting a bird dog, right? A little hunter. <laughs> um, all right. So 
Aries, we'll talk more about this Aries Libra axis. Um, and let me give you just a little more of an overview around the archetypes. This is a conversation, by the way, I know that I'm kind of speeding through it, but I do that because I want to give you as much as I can in this conversation, in this video. I'm going to go much deeper into this. So this will probably be around a 40 minute conversation. I don't know, that's like the average length of our podcast. And then I'm going to do a two hour deep dive into this. So I've been working in these eclipses for days and days and days and days now. Um, and I'll throw that two hour deep dive in the rewilding membership. Um, so just know like, if you're like, wow, Serena, can you fucking slow down? Um, I go a lot slower in there, but slower so that we can embody it more. I do more practices in there. I will definitely talk more about it. I will take us deeper into the archetypes of it. It'll be a way that we can really, um, let me feel like somatically, energetically, emotionally even, spiritually work with the energies of Eclipse. Um, but I'll do that when I have more time in the two hour deep dive. So it's just, if you're interested, don't worry, we're gonna go wild and big and deep and I'm gonna give you everything I can um, here in this context, in the podcast. Um, but just know like there's a way to go further um, and there's a special on that is good for like a portion of March. So if you're watching this at the right time, it's only 14 bucks to join membership um, for a month and you can try it out and get the whole deep dive plus another i think it's eight hours of workshops that are sitting there so all kind of will aim around eclipse energy so uh, if you want to journey into this energy to get the most out of it because it is a soulful time it's a time to be doing you know whether you do rewilding membership and go into the deep dive and all those things or something else feel into this, it's a soulful time. So it's a time to do soul purpose work, whatever that means, soul journeys, um, spiritual journeys. But here's the, here's the interesting part. It's like, um, spiritual journeys. This eclipse is not asking us to do disembodied spiritual journeys. It's not asking you to have a spiritual experience. It's asking you to embrace and embody more of your soul. Like, um, soul retrieval, soul embodiment, calling your soul in, calling your soul gifts up, right? What did you come into this lifetime with? What wisdom, what gifts did you come into this lifetime with that have not turned on yet? That's a really good question to ask around this eclipse season. Really good question to ask. What soul gifts, what soul wisdom did I come into this life with that have not turned on yet? This can also be considered your golden shadow. So if you've heard the term golden shadow, yeah, it's within our unconscious, within the hidden aspect of self, which is, you know, about like 80% of self, <laughs> they, they consider a very high percentage of self, much more than 50% is what we are not even conscious to. Isn't that fucking crazy? Even if it's 20%, right? Like who cares about the numbers? Like, I don't know who's doing these studies, whatever. Even if it's 20%, that's still like 20% of myself that is hidden from myself. Isn't that crazy? So in there is, of course, like um, things that we don't want to feel, you know, which people typically think of shadow territory. And I think I'm talking about this here in this conversation because eclipses can be very shadowy. They innately are shadowy. Think about it. The eclipse, just from an astronomical standpoint, it's that the light of the sun and the moon are uh, like the earth is getting in the way of things right? Um, and so it's like hiding the light. It's innately shadowy and it innately kind of activates our shadow territory, this hidden territory in self. Um, and so feel into this as another theme of eclipse energy. It's also shadow territory of what are the um, like hidden stuffed down unprocessed feel into this unprocessed traumas and emotions unhealed wounds and i'm specifically saying unhealed wounds because chiron wounded healer shaman elder wisdom keeper right that's an archetypal energy chiron is a loud player in this eclipse season i mean he is one of the primary archetypal energies of this eclipse season if i had to pick one right? If I had to just pick one archetypal energy that was not like Aries or Libra, right? Like the, the signs, because those are archetypal energies too. If I had to just pick one outside of those, I would pick Chiron. I would, I would pick Chiron. That's massive healing. 
That's massive healing. So this eclipse season is about massive healing and it's embodied healing. Chiron is half horse, half man. It's a very embodied archetype. It's shamanic, it's earthy, it's grounded, it's in the body and it's deep somatic healing. That's what Chiron's bringing in this eclipse season. So we come back to this shadow territory aspect of eclipses, just all eclipses in general, bring up shadow territory. And it's beautiful because it's shadow territory where we, um, we get to heal unprocessed events, unprocessed traumas. Eclipse seasons also bring up more than just this lifetime of unprocessed emotions, unprocessed events, um, unprocessed, unhealed wounds. It's beyond just this lifetime. It's ancestral. This is a very, very ancestral eclipse. It's very much attached to the ancestral conditioning we've absorbed, the ancestral patterning, the ancestral unhealed wounds, the ancestral unreclaimed gifts. Think about that. Like, hmm, if I feel back into my lineage, the women in my lineage, they were actually fucking witches, but they switched their witch power off couple generations ago. So in the line, there is this um, unreclaimed gift of medicine woman. There's this unreclaimed gift of oracle. There's this unreclaimed gift of hands-on healer. There's this unreclaimed, so feel into that. What are these not yet reclaimed gifts sitting in the ancestral line? Now can you see we're starting to talk about the golden shadow. So oftentimes we start to go into this territory and first we feel into you know, what needs to be released, the blocks that are blocking these potentials, these unreclaimed gifts. So what are the blocks? There's emotional blocks, unprocessed emotion, which we just talked about. There's unhealed wounds, which we just talked about. What are these blocks that are blocking these innate, extraordinary um, gifts that are, they're just sitting in the shadow. They're sitting in that unconscious territory. They're just, waiting to be seen, waiting to be reclaimed, waiting to be integrated, waiting to be embodied and expressed outside of you. Really and truly, and this is all of us, this isn't like special to a select few. You don't have to be like spiritual enough or embodied in it. Like it's all of us, it's every single person on this planet. The more that we release these blocks um, these unconscious uh, upper limits, these unconscious, uh, you know, it's like where we put a lid on it. Uh, you know, like I, 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 I've judged my, let's say I've judged my witch. We'll just go off of this one a little bit more. I've judged the witch in myself. I've judged the, the medicine woman in myself. I've been terrified, terrified. Well, if I open up and I, and I really like, reclaim or claim like how like i'm a really earthy individual i mean like i can be really fucking feral i mean feral like i don't want to wear shoes <laughs> like i want to just like be outside all of the time i don't really care like rolling around the dirt getting muddy right but that took me a while to like undomesticate myself enough and stop judging that part of myself right and to have enough strength to stand up to the judgment coming at me around being, you know, kind of grubby, like being kind of feral because it connects me to my animal nature. It connects me to nature. It connects me to like greater rhythms in nature. Being barefoot connects me to greater rhythms in nature. Like being, anyways, I won't go off on more stories about myself, but hopefully that helps to point to um, different parts of yourself and what I'm kind of talking about here when once we release the judgments, we release the emotional blocks, we release the ancestral um, conditioning around it or the societal conditioning around it or all of those things, once we release enough that the gifts and the magic start to open up, right? So the gifts and the magic, like now I can, like this is just a silly one. Um, I can like sense into ley lines, right? Like I, I never, I didn't, I didn't even know what those things were. No one, like, that's not a thing. Everyone, you know, like it's kind of like one of those, like whatever, some people could really judge it as like, oh, okay. Okay, you, you know, what like diviner, you know, like you're divining. 
like ley lines, but it's just my body plugs into that. It's like a just a heightened sensitivity of like I can feel the energetics in the, the gridding of the earth sometimes and in some places and there's like hot spots. Like there's a reason I go to Zion all the time because it's a hot spot. Like veils are fucking thin, right? I don't know that I can live there because it's really intense. But that was not something I always had. It was having to release the blocks around that, the judgment I had around that, right? And, uh, and then what opened up is just this innate knowing. It's just this innate knowing in my body. Like my body just knows. It just, it just knows when I'm on like a dead spot. Like I'm on a dead spot on the planet or I'm on, a, on an alive spot and can kind of feel into like the flavor of that aliveness, the flavor of that, of that like ley line, that energetic line that runs beneath me. And of course there's all kinds of stuff around us and all over the place, but um, so that's part of eclipses. All right, let's kind of dial this in. Let me bring it back to you really quickly. So here's a great question to ask yourself. Here's a great question to ask yourself. <laughs> this is a weird one, but it's really, it's really helpful. It's really good. What are like the themes of movies that you love watching? The themes of movies that you love watching or themes in books that you love reading or like, Things that you're just drawn to, like storylines that you're just drawn to, or gifts in other people that you're drawn to, right? Like seemingly, um, like for me, when I was younger, I was always drawn to people who were really good speakers, like really good speakers, presenters that could give like a great talk. And now look what I do, <laughs> I talk my face off now. <laughs> But when I was younger, it was pointing to something I was growing into. So that's a really powerful and simple, really easy way, but you gotta kind of take some time and do it when it's like quiet time, when your mind can be quiet and you can just like reflect back of like, you know, like who do I always like kind of like look up to or like what gifts in other people do I really admire? Or what themes in movies and books, like I always love watching movies about people who have superpowers, right? Like, like witchy gifts or magical sorcerer gifts or, you know, like superpowers. And that's so very much a part of what I do, right? Is facilitate schools and retreats where people are opening up to these um, more esoteric gifts, these more out there gifts, these sorcerer, priestess, witchy, warlocky gifts, right? So there's this correlation oftentimes, like we're drawn to the things um, that are either opening up in us or awakening in us, or that we're meant to, we're, we're meant to walk toward that. Um, something else that's very powerful during eclipse season, um, I'll say it like this, this particular eclipse season, because it's a north node in Aries, so it's you dancing to the beat of your own drum. So think about that. If I were going to dance to the beat of my own drum, if I were going to dance to the beat of my own drum, right? And whatever you have to do to kind of shake off you know, if you have to like meditate or dance around or just keep like repeating that as a mantra, right? Over and over, if I'm gonna dance to the beat of my own drum, 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 what does that look like? What does that look like? If like my soul was gonna be doing this like wild happy dance and I'm dancing to the beat of my own drum and I just do not care what other people think, that's Aries. I do not care what other people think. I do not care. I'm like, I do not care. I'm gonna dance to the beat of my own drum and I am going to forge my own way, that's Aries. And that's where we're being um, guided toward. That's the energy that's supporting us to come into our highest expression of self during this eclipse season and next eclipse, which will be in about six months time, right? So it's about a year and a half that we get this energy. So we've been in it. The last eclipse is in October. You might. This is something else you could do, just another reflection practice, is to go back to October and think about what was happening in October because those themes in October could be coming back around now for this eclipse season. Maybe, maybe not, might be different, but that's just another offering there. So these questions around what lights me up, 
right? What really lights me up if I were gonna dance to the beat of my own drum, um, if I was gonna forge my own way, if I was gonna be so true to myself, like so wildly, beautifully, fully in myself, like think of yourself as um, like fully shining, right? You're in your full radiance, you're in your full power, you're in your full purpose, right? If you wanna feel into a more masculine way, like I am totally in alignment, I am totally on purpose, I am living my purpose, I am living my mission, right? What is that? What is that? And during eclipse season, the veils get much thinner. We get to access these visions, these visions of what that is that really lights us up, that really fulfills us, that is really meaningful and is really purposeful for us. Another thing around this is to let completely, this will be what's happening also, is because it's south node in Libra, north node in Aries, let go of people pleasing. Really let go of people pleasing. You don't need to make anybody happy with what this is. That is what this is teaching us. This north node in Aries, it's teaching us that we don't need to um, coddle anyone's emotions around this. We don't need to fit in any box that we were given. We don't have to play a role for anybody. Do you feel this Aries gift? This is the gift of Aries. It's the gift of North Node in Aries, right? Like you get to be you. You be you. You be you. You be you, right? You be you. It's the greatest gift that you can give to the world is you being just so fully, authentically, truly you, right? And so, some of what we're gonna to have to let go of and this first full moon, this first eclipse, which is the full moon eclipse on March 25th, this full moon eclipse, full moons are about culminations, endings, deaths. So what is it that I have to let go of, right? Can I let go of some of my people pleasing? Can I let go of the ways that I compromise myself, my true self, my soul self? How am I compromising my soul self? What do I need to let go of? What are the people, the places, the things, the thought patterns, the all, I mean, go way beyond just physical objects, right? What is the karma I need to drop? What is the emotional baggage I need to drop? What is the past life, um, karmic knot that I need to drop. I mean, find the practices that take you into those places. If you don't have one, go join Rewilding membership. This is exactly what we do in the March workshop, which you get instant access to, right? You walk, we walk right into the South Node territory. We work South Node and we work Chiron. You energetically work Chiron and South Node territory. And that's what this territory is. It's South Node. What is the karma I need to drop, the baggage I need to drop, the wounding that I'm ready to heal, to drop, right? What is all of that so that I can be so true to myself on purpose? Um, all right. I feel like <laughs> I could go on and on and on and on about this, but there's more of this in membership, uh, more ways to work with this in membership, reflective question. That's what all of that's about. The two hour deep dive, we'll go deeper into that. But I wanna give you more of the archetypal energies and I wanna kinda, um, separate these two eclipses a little bit. So I know I'm talking about like overall eclipse season and what it's about and it being so much about soul purpose, so much about Aries, being true to self. But let's talk a little more specifically about what these two are. So the first one, March 25th, I started talking about this. It's a full moon eclipse. So it's a full moon. Full moons means the ending of something. So eclipses bring endings and beginnings, but they make them bigger. It's like a bigger ending for a bigger beginning. That April 8th is a new moon eclipse, right? So that's new moon and it's also new moon in Aries. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It's the go, it's go, right? It's, it's a, an ending of like the 12 month cycle. So it's a big ending and it being an eclipse, it's a big ending, big, so just think, big, big, big ending. You know, if like normally a moon cycle would be the end of a chapter in your book, this is like the end of a book in your life, right? Like if it's the end of a chapter in your life, a normal lunar cycle, a, right? This is, <laughs> this is the ending of book one, two, three, four, five in your life. And then that new moon is the new book in your life. That's it's a way to think about that. And you can meditate on that, right? And you can really feel into, okay, wow, what am I wrapping up here? What am I wrapping up? What needs to be wrapped up? And you feel into this, what needs to be wrapped up before the new moon, 
before the new moon on April 8th, before that new moon eclipse, what is it that I'm wrapping up? What is it that's coming to completion? How can I support this coming to completion, this wrapping up these endings? What is it that wants to end, right? And again, go beyond just the physical stuff. It's not just ending relationships, although that will be a thing. Um, not just uh, intimate relationships or romantic relationships, but relationships, 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 <laughs> um, connections, ties. Um, and then think also about like people pleasing sort of things. How, what, um, what sort of habits or patterns do I have around compromising myself for other? So think of self versus self versus other, me versus we. And right now the greatest thing that we can do is give me the spotlight but it's me as in me unique, me, me dancing to the beat of my own drum, me forging my own path, me walking down like my truest true north path because that is the greatest gift I can give humanity. That's the greatest thing that I can do for the whole of everything. All the people I love, it's the greatest thing I can do for my kids, it's the greatest thing I can actually do for my partner, for my family, for my world, is to be so truly uniquely me. And it might not look like that on a surface level egoical standpoint. It might look like you're rocking the boat. It might look like you're the black sheep of the family. It might look like you're pushing the boundaries and you're pushing the edges, but you're actually giving a really great gift and it's a high voltage soul gift. It's a higher self gift that we're giving. Some of us are really called to that. And if you are, man, my heart goes out to you, right? Because sometimes it ain't easy. Like it ain't easy being that person. Um, and I know that there's a lot of you in this community um, who uh, it is you. If it is you um, and you want to leave a comment down below, uh, I'd love to hear from you, right? Like maybe just you put up like black sheep here or boat rocker here. Um, I'd love that. I'm always in the comments the first two days. More than that, I always kind of go back to the comments too, but um, I'm always in the comments uh, after videos go out. And I just love hearing from you all. This is a co-creation. I wouldn't be here without you. Um, so I'd love to know fellow boat rockers. I definitely <laughs> um, am one of them. Um, all right, so let's talk more on, let's go to archetypes now. I think it's a good time to shift into talking about the archetypes at play. So that's um, full moon versus new moon on that April 8th. Let's just wrap this piece up on that April 8th. That's like new chapter, new beginning. We're in the sign of Aries at that point, right? Air, like sun is in Aries, the moon is in Aries on that new moon. Everything's kind of moving in Aries, Mercury's in Aries, although he's retrograde. So that's a very interesting archetypal energy we'll get into in a second, because that's the mind. He's on an inward underground shadow journey. So your mind is going into the shadow territory to excavate, this is stunning, like it's crazy stunning and crazy beautiful, to excavate truths for you, things that you couldn't see before. I mean, it's gonna be a revelatory eclipse season. The fact that Mercury goes retrograde on the first, on the first, the first of April, in between the first and second, fucking stunning. It's crazy stunning. It's crazy stunning. He's literally in total support of this eclipse, total support of your soul's path forward. He's like, and I'm gonna help your mind to translate what's going on here. So we get to see we get to think things, our mind gets to comprehend things that we normally couldn't, because sometimes it's such a soulful eclipse or it's such a body-based eclipse, or it's like you need body wisdom going on to be able to access what's happening, but the mind is involved because Mercury's gone backwards. He's going inward and he's like, I'm in. I'm in and I can translate these energies for you. That's his job, he's messenger of the gods. So he's going and he's like, I'm gonna translate exactly what's going on for you here. I'm gonna translate south node for you, I'm gonna translate north node for you, I'm gonna translate, I'm gonna, I'm gonna translate what's happening and I'm gonna give you very specific instructions on what you need to drop, what you need to heal, what you need to let go of, what is no longer you and where it is that you're aiming to so that you can fulfill, right? That dancing to the beat of your own drum and being so stinking true to self and giving your greatest gifts to the world. And ultimately that's like creating your best life ever. I mean, this whole thing, this whole conversation, right? Leads to you having this crazy happy life, right? All the things that we want like daily, you know, like I wanna just be fucking happy. Like where's the joy, man? Like where's the pleasure? I want love, I wanna experience love. I wanna experience purpose and meaning in my life. Well, well yeah, this is it. <laughs> this point this gives you all of that gives you all of that it's just this alignment piece um all right so i'm getting a little bit off track i i want to come back to april 8th and what that means um let's just talk it's in aries and so 
at that point, it's like the start of the astrological new year, right? It's the, it's now we're moving into that first sign of the zodiac. Everything is still direct except Mercury. So all planets will still be direct for a little while, um, except for Mercury. And so it's still a go time and it's like a real go time, right? A real go time. My sense, this is just my sense. You feel for what feels true for you. Um, but my sense is that there's gonna be a lot of awakening going on. So healing because of the Chiron piece, but also a lot of this awakening happening. We've got a Jupiter um, conjunct Uranus happening after this eclipse. So this is happening on the 21st. To me, this is like we're walking into the new in a very heightened, a more aware, more awake, more conscious state, whatever that means for us, right? Whatever that means for us, it's like, and we are now much more awake and we are now much more aware and we are now much more alive. To me, Jupiter and Uranus is very much aliveness. It's Kundalini awakening. Uranus is all about Kundalini awakening. Kundalini is our life force, right? You can also associate it with like the feminine um, aspect of the divine. So a very embodied, a very alive, a very soulful, like we're waking up to more of our embodied divinity. Jupiter expansive, expanding it. So to me, this April 8th eclipse is, is it's, and here we are, here we are, here we are in our, um, some people like are referring to it as like, I don't know, like new earth or the new way or new relationships or new me or new consciousness or new, however it is like, if you're feeling any of that, this is a time of just like propelling us into like new life trajectories. You can kind of feel into that new timelines, um, new soul gifts, new careers, new relationships. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. But before we get to that, we gotta drop some shit. <laughs> and that's what the March 25th eclipse is about. That's what all this leading up to it about is about. And that's what April 8th eclipse is about too. Yeah, it's a new moon, but it's gonna get um, more and more and more intense and more and more and more fiery more and more fiery of like, and here's what you need to heal. Um, and here's what you need to drop. And here's the karma. And, and it's going, let me feel, I don't want to say it like that. The more that we can consciously work with it, bring our awareness to um, what it is that no longer serves. It's a lot about eclipses. What's being eclipsed out of our life? What no longer serves? What no longer fits? What thought patterns don't fit? What relationships don't fit? Boundaries is a big one. Um, Libra Aries, I want to talk more about this and these themes that are being brought up. Boundaries that don't, that don't work anymore. Um, safety, security, mechanisms that no longer work. They're actually harming you. They're holding you back. They're hurting you. Things that you do to feel safe, like I spidey sense into everything and everyone all of the time. I've been doing it since I was a tiny little kid, right? It's part of what kept me safe. It's just, I would psychically, right? Energetically always be on like eight different levels of my environment and of every person constantly, constantly, constantly. And it was, it's a great skill to have. It really like helps me in rewilding, right? Cause I could spidey sense to a whole lot of things when I'm facilitating, right? I could feel into like, what's the shadow sitting in the room that nobody wants to talk about, right? So there's great gifts to it. But there was also this piece that's happening now is this rewiring of it of like, I can't have the, all of these spidey senses, spidey sensing into absolutely everything all of the time because it's causing me overwhelm. It's now time to drop some of that. Um, in certain ways where it's just automatically running, right? It's not serving anymore. And it was an old safety survival mechanism, right? It was initially created as a little one when I was, when I, safety survival, right? It kept me safe. <laughs> I got to know all kinds of things about my environment and make decisions not based on what was being said because what was being said did not match the deeper truth of what was going on in, in the people in my environment. I mean, that's like everybody's environment. But for whatever reason, that was one of the things that I developed um, but now it's going, this is actually wasting a lot of my energy and it's wasting a lot of my consciousness. I have consciousness um, in places that it's not serving anymore. I need to like narrow it in so I can um, create, I don't know, like so I can um, direct. We're starting to work with creation energy um, in rewilding and it's causing a whole lot of um, different shifts and different changes, which are really wild and beautiful and fun. Um, stay tuned. We're doing creation mystery school, um, like September of this year. So if you're like, what is that Sabrina? Uh, we're diving into that later in the year. Um, not anytime soon. It's taking a while to prep for that, um, energetically 
and like physically in the team to get us ready to hold another mystery school. Um, okay, so let's talk just a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna go again, I'm gonna go into this more in the two hour deep dive. So know that I'm kind of just scratching the surface. I mean, eclipses are potent, they're magic. The mystics worked with eclipses deeply. They knew, they knew that these portals that come around twice a year, right? They only come around twice a year and the alignments never line up again, right? Like the alignment of this never lines up again. Like in your lifetime, we will never fucking see this again. Never will we see this again in our lifetime. Um, and so they knew like these are, this moment in time will never come again. And it's a powerful time to propel myself into my next greatest life. It's, it's, it's destiny, right? Like it is, it is destiny on speed, <laughs> right? And it's beautiful to work with it. It's beautiful to get in the river of destiny. And so if there's anything I can share with you is to get in that river of destiny, whatever way that is for you, right? You've probably got your own practices, your own ways of getting in there. I don't know, other groups or workshops or I don't know. But if you don't like, 14 bucks, right? Join a rewilding membership. If that's not 14 bucks and it's only 59, um, if you're watching this a little bit later on, like who cares? Come join us for a month. If you don't like it, don't stay. Um, but we'd love to offer that to you. Like we'd love to keep going with you if this sings to you. I don't know if it does. Um, all right, let me give you a quick rundown of the archetypes. Uh, and then we'll wrap things up here. So archetypes, uh, we've got Shiva. That's a really beautiful archetype to have. I love that he's in this placement. Shiva, divine masculine, bringing more consciousness. Love it. And he's in beautiful supportive aspect, conjunct. So it's bringing more, but he's like a benevolent. It's a benevolent. It's like Jupiter's benevolent. Venus is benevolent. It's like a benevolent energy and it's bringing high consciousness. To me, this is going to um, add to more of the healing that Chiron's bringing, specifically masculine healing. There's a lot of healing of our masculine traits, masculine direction, masculine ability to permeate into something, to penetrate into something, masculine ability to focus our consciousness, masculine ability to hold the space, masculine ability to stay present to anything and everything that life is throwing at us. So it's really this amazing eclipse that will be bringing our masculine up to the next level. In all of us, it's not men, it's not a gender specific thing, it's your masculine. And we all use our masculine every day, all of the time. And so it's like, bringing it up to its next highest expression, its next most evolved expression. It's beautiful, really, really a beautiful thing going on there. Um, again, we'll work more with that in membership along with Chiron and the healing that's coming with it. So second archetypal energy, Chiron, um, wounded healer, very shamanic. I don't think I need to go into that. Just know that he, there is no place that he cannot go to bring healing to. He oftentimes wants to go to our deepest wound. So that's the Chiron wound, um, the wounded healer. We all have like Chiron wounds or Chiron, um, chironic places within ourselves. And he's like, let's go here, right? To the deepest place that we can get to. There's a lot of miraculous healing happening at the moment. There are capacities and there's um, potentials for really quick shifts, really miraculous type of healing at the moment. Um, okay, so I don't know that Venus is gonna be in the mix here. She's opposite this first eclipse. She's opposite um, Black Moon Lilith and she's square to Persephone. So that was the dark goddesses coming into the mix. Dark goddesses, they bring fierce grace, right? They bring fierce grace. I already talked about Eris as a dark goddess. She is loud during this whole eclipse season. She's bringing chaos and discord so you can get to the truth. Persephone brings, and let's go into the underworld, right? Let's go into the underworld because I really want you to see the deep things that you desire that you don't want to admit to. That's Persephone. I want, I want you to see the deep things that you desire that you don't want to admit to. Persephone is also being initiated, initiated into your power. Like you go from being maiden, right? Maiden to queen. She becomes queen of the underworld. Maiden to queen, sovereign. It's very sovereign. And Aries being in the North Node, it's very much about sovereign. So a lot of this empowerment piece, like very much empowerment um, into our sovereignty. Um, Okay, so I think that's good there. Black Moon Lilith, she's gonna, that's to me that point in the chart. Some people will point to it just being Lilith. For me, it's the conglomeration of all the dark goddesses. And when we start talking about all the dark goddesses, it's like, here's what's in the deep sacred feminine. Here's the gifts and the magic in the deep sacred feminine. There's so much more, right? There's so much more love. There's so much more connection. There's so much more soul. Here's the gifts that are hidden in the deep sacred feminine. So they're in, they're in the mix. <laughs> 
just that, um, which is beautiful. Um, and they're actually pointing, they end up pointing at this North Node. Um, Kali gets in the mix during the April 8th um, eclipse and she ends up pointing at this North Node. All right, there's a few more archetypal energies, but I think I'm gonna end it here. We're already over the 40 minutes. Um, it has been amazing to touch into eclipse season. Again, I would love to go deeper with you if you feel to in the deep dive. If not, I'd love to see you in the comments below. Um, that's an awesome place just to connect in. And so is our Facebook group. Um, so those are two kind of just open, open spaces um, where I hang out a lot and then membership. Um, if you want to go and work in the energies or you want the deeper dive into uh, these two eclipses, which I'm going to go and film right now, actually, um, while I'm completely in all of this energy. So uh, I love you all, and I'm super grateful for what we get to do here, being on the podcast, being on the YouTube um, channel in this way. Um, Y'all just light me up. Like, this is part of my North Node, and my true North um, is just being here with you all, and it's a co-creation. It's very much, it's, it's not me. I don't get to do this without you all, and I'm, it makes me want to fucking cry. <laughs> Um, I'm just grateful, uh, so grateful for what you all bring all the time in the comments and just in the community and all the different places that I get to be with you and hang out with you. Um, thank you for what you do in rewilding. All right, huge love to you guys. Mwah.